Hi, welcome to my channel about peer support. This is not an introduction to the channel. It is not an introduction to peer support and what it is. This is an introduction to me. I want to talk a little bit about myself, about my experience with peer support, and you know why I feel that that makes me qualified to share something with you about the process and the topic. Um, this is not my mental health story. My primary qualification as a peer support worker is my lived experience of mental distress and my lived experience of recovery from that distress or unwellness. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, background, qualifications and uh, life experience that have led me into peer support as an introduction simply to who I am. Um, my lived experience story I will certainly record in another video which will be included here and I'll also talk about things such as my LGBTIQ identity and how that has related to mental health and peer support because these things are also relevant. So my name is Fran, Fran Munro. Um, I've been in peer support since 2006 that is around about um, a little over 10 years. I started out seeking support because of my own distress and unwellness. And I found a group support program called GROW, who provide free 12 step based peer support. Uh, they don't call it peer support, they call it mutual self help or um, various other names because GROW is an old organization and they have their own language. But effectively, it is peer support. It's people getting together, working on their own needs and supporting each other in groups. I ended up volunteering with GROW, being a group organiser. And um, then I was employed in a reception and administration role with GROW. Uh, and this is where I learned about things such as phone counselling and suicide intervention um, through an organisation called ASSIST um, because people were ringing up the office and um, talking about being suicidal. And um, so that was one of the major learning curves that I had in working for a mental health organisation. Later on, I got qualified with a certificate for in mental health and I worked as a peer support worker for the last four years in what's called a subclinical service. That is a health service, part of a hospital, but it is generally considered to be, you know, serving the needs of people who are not at the highest level. Um, and that's run as a partnership between Mind Australia, a community organisation, and a health service here in Melbourne. Um, and at the same time, as I was doing this, because it was a half-time role, I also did lived experience perspective training with MIND, uh, particularly in staff orientation. And I helped train up our next cohorts of peer and carer workers. And um, that's where my primary skills and experience come from. I have a teaching degree. I have a certificate for in training and assessment. And these are useful things, um, particularly for seeking employment, but my primary experience comes from actually doing, from doing peer support in a service and from doing training, listening to what peer support workers are saying about their work, about their jobs, about um, the level of support that they perceive um, and trying to find the skills, knowledge and experience that will help them in the training process to go out there and to work, whether it's in this job or their next job, because um, I have high hopes that many of the people who are going through training as peer support workers now will eventually become lived experience managers, will become um, Psychologists will go on and do 
great things to save the health system from itself using a lived experience perspective. Sorry, dry mouth. Um, I will tell my survivor story elsewhere. Suffice to say that I have a lived experience in mental distress, a diagnosis, a supporting psychiatrist, and I use these things to stay well and do my work. Um, it's this lived experience and a willingness to use it that is the one essential qualification of being a peer worker. I am recording these ideas now because I am dying of cancer and I'm not going to get an opportunity to write a book or do further training courses for people. Money and ownership don't matter in this situation. I put these videos in public domain so that people can use them, transform them, um, exploit them commercially, or use them in a non-commercial role. Um, if the information is helpful, please use it. Um, I hope that these ideas might be useful and improve lives and bring positive change. Please take them, play them and use them and transform them freely. Thank you.